For my school years in Korea, for 12 years from elementary school all the way to high school, I always got beat up by the teacher because I was a bad performer. I always did not agree with how we were supposed to be learning in schools. My father was an engineer and so he had a lot of different tools. I used a lot of his tools to design things and make things. It's almost like maker space. In many cases, when I was not going to school, I broke things apart, wanted to see what's inside of a refrigerator or cameras and things like that. I, I think I taught myself how to investigate, how to analyze things. I had a lot of fun doing that instead of sitting in classroom in rows listening to the teachers' lectures for hours and hours. Hi, my name is Paul Kim. I'm the Associate Dean, Chief Technology Officer, Sanford University Graduate School of Education. After graduating high school, I thought that there's got to be something different. Maybe the U.S. might have a little different environment. I wanted to give it a try, and I asked my father if I could go abroad and study in the U.S. So I eventually came to the U.S and then enrolled in an ESL program to learn English because my English was obviously horrible. The most memorable moment for me was the very first college level course, it's a music appreciation course. And I loved music all along. Music appreciation, it's got to be something that I can do really well. So I remember submitting my very first essay on one page. I just couldn't say much about it and I put a couple of sentences and the professor looked at me and said, what is this? You're supposed to express your appreciation of the music. I told my professor, English is really challenging for me. I have some ideas about it. It's really hard to express myself. And the professor said, what language do you speak? I said, Korean. And he said, well, then write it in Korean. So I produced a five-page essay full of adjectives, rich expression. And I explained with a Korean English dictionary to the professor, word by word, he said, wow, you, you are quite expressive. You have a lot of ideas. This course is not an English course. You deserve an A. So that was my very first A in a U.S. college, very first class. And I, I was so excited. And I thought, maybe I want to keep getting an A. And I started to uh, take math classes and other classes. And I received straight A's in all, all of the courses. From that whole experience, I, I learned that, you know, if you want to be a true educator, you got to understand the students individually. I started with a computer science background. My bachelor's degree was in computer science. When I finished my computer science degree, I had a, a brief uh, time of opportunity to teach a few uh, students. And basically, I was a coach to students who were struggling in schools because the students were really poor performing students. And that sort of reminded me of my earlier school years. I was not a high performer. I, I was a sort of a bottom performing student as well. So I, I was able to relate myself. And the students didn't want to learn English and they were terrible at English. And I had to somehow get them motivated to learn English. I sat down with a student and asked, what are you interested in? And that little male student showed interest in automobiles, like sports cars. And, and I got uh, myself a few automobile magazines. And the next time when I met the boy, I shared those magazines take a look at these magazines. Aren't they beautiful? There are a lot of interesting cars, performance charts, and all kinds of things that would interest him. The student looked at it and said, wow, this is exciting. And he, he tried to read the magazine, basically, although he didn't fully understand. But he started to show, I really want to understand what this magazine is showing me. That helped the student to learn English. Later down the road, I kind of felt love with teaching and coaching. And I, I realized that I could actually change their lives. I mean, that is the importance of education. Education can change people's lives. Education can give people opportunities, new chances. And I started to seek ways to leverage my technical competencies in the field of education. And I found uh, master's and doctoral degrees in education technology. And I thought, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to utilize my skill sets and knowledge in technology. And that's why I got myself a PhD in education technology. And I've been staying in this field of education technology since then. Next challenge. Can you make a question with the words who and renewable? Types of solutions that I have developed, major ones are like SMILE, Stanford Mobile Inquiry-Based Learning Environment, which helps students to develop the inquiry skills. When I was going to school, 
I didn't ask a question. If I ask a, a wrong question or stupid questions, you're not only embarrassing yourself, but teachers would not be happy with, with your questions. It, it was not in our culture to ask free questions. If you think back 1950s when people were developing rockets to go to the space, you know, who would imagine that you could go to the moon? They, basically, they, their question was, can we go to the moon? What does it take to go to the moon? How do we get there? And what do you need to develop? First, the bold question led to other important questions as well. So questions lead to more important questions, and questions lead to more innovative questions, etc. So questions do help you learn, change, and innovate. When a new question arrives, this AI model will look at which question in the database is most relevant to this particular question in terms of the context and the word choices. And then it says, hey, your question is 99.98% correlated with level three question. Therefore, your question is level three. The simple recall questions get at level one, hypothetical and creative innovative questions get level five. So things that are taking us to the unknown, I think those are really good questions. As I have implemented SMILE in many different countries, one of memorable moments was in Ethiopia. Obviously, the early days of the activity, students came up with very simple recall questions because that's what they're used to. But we helped them differentiate what is a good question versus not so good questions. After about six months of workshops, one female student in fifth grade classroom came up with a question such as, do we have constitutional law that protects women's right? And that was a quite good question. It was not about yes we do or not. It's about getting the students to think, what is women's rights? And I was quite proud of those students because they finally kind of got that idea of what is the importance of questioning in a society. But when students grow up with such important critical questions, imagine what will happen if they become a leader of the country. You can open up an environment for your students to come up with any questions to begin with. You can just have them ask all kinds of questions. But once you start to build up the context and get them to be interested in a certain problem, then they, the, the real questions start to come out. So I think that when we look at the education ecosystem, in terms of the resources, environments, and tools, a lot of things have changed. When you have your even just this tiny smartphone, you have the whole world in your hand. You have all kinds of tools on the phone that you could use. The things that have not changed are like the learning model and the teaching models, especially in public schools around the world. The public schools understand education is that they need to educate students in the most safest model and most efficient way. Because of that, that eliminates a lot of important ingredients or elements in the learning process. One, you don't get to understand individual students because you're dealing with many students at the same time. And teachers are busy doing a lot of administrative work. It is hard to keep track of that at the individual level. Two, teachers are not given a lot of authority to change things. Because of that, education is hard to innovate. In the old days, people had to learn to shoot arrows. People had to learn how to use knives. They used to learn a lot of things to be able to survive. We don't teach these old ancient skills in schools anymore. What we should be teaching in the future school is very important. The new competencies that are required to be successful, first of all, self-regulation, regulating yourself, monitoring yourself. At the metacognitive level, you have to be able to see yourself and understand yourself better. That involves assessing yourself, your weaknesses and strengths, and be able to manage your own learning progress. With self-regulative skills, the skill sets that, that are really needed in the future school is that how to best utilize the tools around you and the network that you're in. Those are the kinds of things that you have to be able to do really well because technology will change always. If you don't know what they are and how to utilize them, I think your generation as well as your next generation will have a hard time. I think it, what's important that needs to be discussed in school curriculum is that how do we get our students to prepare to use those tools and be more adaptive. And I think that we're not doing that in current education systems. And I think that needs to change. 
I have series of many students who are so inspirational to me and I learn a lot from them. I always get inspired from my own students. Education is to give a chance, is to change people's lives and share peace and prosperity for all. I would love to see the future of education being available to all learners and the best of the best quality education is available to all learners who want them. Regardless of your background, everyone deserves the best education. That sort of education is what we are all striving to come up with. It may take some time, it may take a lot of efforts, but I think it's a worthwhile journey as an educator to get to that point with the technology, making things efficient and making things more accessible. Uh, I think that we are closer than ever to come up with high quality education program for all. Education is the foundation for peace and prosperity for all.